Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome back to Sorcery with me, Cornish Knight, and our brave adventurer looking for the lost crown. We just saved a man from a tree, and sort of are on our way. We had a bite to eat. Our rations are starting to run out. Let us press on, shall we? In the valley. The valley continues and you walk for many hours until the sun begins to set behind the bank and the air grows cool. Now will be the time to find and pitch camp if you intend to sleep before darkness descends completely but the moon will rise soon enough and you could walk on through the night somewhere beyond this valley there could be a village of real beds. Make camp, keep walking. Hmm. I might keep walking on. I mean, this is all nice and everything, but if I get jumped in the night, it's not a good idea. There is much progress to be made in return for a little termination. You keep walking, you will be weaker for it tomorrow, of course. Still, you make good progress and cover considerable ground. As you walk, you think of the crown. It calls you onwards already, even though you have never seen it. It is as if it knows your name and is waiting for you, deep in the fortress of... Mam Mambang, does it summon you to rescue it or restore the balance of power to the F Fempri Alliance, or does it summon you to you to your death and destruction to, to a place of a place or to place a seal on the power of the Archmage? The next morning, the next um, the morning. The morning air is cool and good for walking. You feel the presence of your spirit, of the baboon, close nearby. Its form has changed since you left Annaland, just as you have changed, but it's still walking beside you. In the temple they taught you that, that praying to your spirit could heal disease, lift curses and even save you from certain death, but the, sp the spirits are not generous and decline to help often. You can ask, ask the spirit using the prayer button. Hmm. Your spirit is the baboon, strong, intelligent, and int strong social intelligence. The baboon will sigh from danger, preferring to live in the safety of trees rather than risk exposure on the ground. Praying to your spirit will heal you, but after a prayer, the spirit will not hear again for some time. Uh, I don't need it. I'm going to save it. Walk on. This morning begins your, brings you new vigour and you stride forward. After a few hours you come across a rope bridge strung precariously between two boulders and spanning the, a river. The path leads away from it to the other side and runs over a small hill. Okay. Um, we crossed the rickety looking bridge. I, I thought it was going to be more impressive considering that they actually have a proper bridge on the map. Um... Okay, uh, stay on the riverbank. Maybe there's a safer part. Maybe there's a safer place upstream. You continue along the riverside path for several more hours until you reach a wide bend. In its elbow is a cluster of huts made of fat branches and twigs. It is clearly not occupied as smoke rises from a fire set in a space between the dwellings, but there is not a sound to be heard. Okay, that's worrying. Hmm. Either they're scared of me or run off, or there's somebody, something has come along and scared them off before I'm here. Go around. Strange villagers cannot help your quest, only slow you down, so instead you clamber up through the undergrowth, planning to make a wide sweep around the village. To go, The going is hard, bushes and tall grass catch you and scratch your arms then suddenly you feel a strong hand on your leg which makes you whirl around but there's no one there the grip stays fast okay oh I can't remember my spells um draw your sword tug and continue um You pull your arms clear of the tangled bushes and you do so a sharp pain begins to form in front of you. A sape begins to form in front of you. Its large 
two-tailed serpent, one of its tails wrapped around your leg and is holding you fast. Oh god. Cast a spell. Let's try... Oh, I can't remember what you need to cast. Um, not dump. Um, law. That was it, law. Control non creatures controls non intelligent creatures cast. Law raising your hands and casting the spell you command the servant to release you, it, it does so, backing away into the bushes until it vanishes entirely from sight. Alone once more, you push on through the brass until you reach a point where they, where they fin on out into a waist-high grassland. God, that was terrifying. The going is much easier out in the open, and you make quick progress. For once, af afforded a view, a wide view of the sweeping. Samutan, Samutanti hills, the thick forests and deep ravines, and it the thick forests and deep ravines. To see it like this, it could cover the whole world. You happen across a parting in the grass where someone has been has been this way before. Hmm. That's worrying. Um, we could go on through the grass. Follow the tracks that they've made. I mean, if it's bandits, they will jump us if we follow the tra uh, Let's try going through the grass. You press on through the grass, and after an hour or so, you reach the riverbank again, well upstream of the village you you were avoiding. But as you stop to take a new view, you notice your backpack feels like looking inside reveals the truth: your provisions have been taken, all your gold is gone. Look around for a thief. You cast about you, wondering about a thief that could have been so fleet of foot and finger to steal from you without you being aware of its presence. And that's when you notice the, gra the way the grass is moving. It isn't a wind making the tips of the stems bend. They're moving on their own accord, wrapping like grass, rasping tentacles around your bag, belt and boots and taking hold, pulling them clean away. Uh, let's try cutting the blade with my sword. You draw your sword and start chopping left and right at the stems, but they don't curve. Quite the opposite, they wind together. They wind together into a thick rope and start to wind around the blade of your sword. Before you know it, they're almost pulling it through your grasp. Cut and slice. Desperately, you slice right and left and manage to free the sword blade enough to tug it free. That was a close thing. Without your sword out here, you'd be food for the first or ogre that came across. You he you heard the stuff. It's Pill for grass, it's not intelligent, but takes things simply through instinct and then carries them away, passing them from blade to blade. You look back across the endless sifting prairies that you've just left. You could search for weeks and never find what you've lost. There's no choice but to give up and move on. So we've lost all our rations and all our food. Leave my pack and go back in? I mean, that's the only choice we have. Carefully, you remove your pack, leaving it on a stone far far enough, you hope, from the grass. You leave your sword as well, your money pouch, everything that isn't tied to your body. If anyone should happen by and steal them, you'll be in serious trouble. Then you wade out into the grass f for what you, what you might find. Look quickly. What? You only dare a quick look and find nothing but a locket containing a small portrait of a woman. Then return quickly back to your belongings. You walk for several hours through a deep forest, eventually reaching the river bank, bank, well upstream of the valley you were avoiding, well, of the village you were avoiding. Uh, so we've lost all of my money. We've got a locket, but we've lost all the money and all my provisions. You reach the river once more, but now the path goes goes across it. Beyond, you see a long, wide track with trees lying the left-hand edge and a wide field of long grass on the right. In the far distance, a curling smoke in the kitchen village. Evening is beginning to draw in. It would be good to reach town before the light is gone. Test the bridge. 
Before crossing, you make sure the test the, the guy ropes with the bridge to ensure it's sound, but it seems safe enough. Satisfied, you make your way across the boards. In the middle of the bridge, a man stops you. Halt, he, he declares. This is my bridge, and cross it, you must pay a toll. I will pay nothing. For what? How much? For what? You look over the aged, gu the aged guy ropes, the warped boards. What is there to pay for? Do you think that these bridges build themselves? Do you think it's it's easy living out here, an outcast from Chris Tatanti Tanti? Try feeding my children. When barely anyone takes these paths anyway, the man is nothing better than a beggar. The toll is just one piece, he says. It's very reasonable. I have no gold. I have no gold, you tell him. He pulls a face and stands up straight suddenly. Oh, you don't? Oh, well. Never mind, then. Have a good day, stranger. And with that, he strides away, whistling. You head off down the bridge and back onto the path. None the wiser. You have a long way to still to travel today. Ugh. I'm going to starve. I just know it. Thieving, blinking grass. The path continues along the side, uh, a side of a side of, of a line of trees. Suddenly, an acorn hits you on the head, and you hear a tingling over from a tittering from overhead. You look up into the trees. From some kind of thin man-like creature throws an acorn back at you. There's no mistaken. It is an elven. Cast a spell. Threaten them. Walk by. Stamina's not great. Uh, let's threaten them. Hurling abuse up into the tree only earns you a more pe petting, including an acorn in your open, cursing mouth. The creature's too high up the grab by their necks, unfortunately. Well, I don't want to cast a spell because it takes stamina, just walk by. You pelt more and more by acorns as well as some sticks and branches. You break into a run, soon you're out of reach of the annoying creatures. Approach Chris Tan Tatanti. The sun is now just past its zenith and everywhere. A dusty heat rises from the baked earth. You are worn out almost to the point of physical apps. You need food and rest and no more trouble today has been too punishing already. You begin to think about where to stay for the night and another night for walking will leave you exhausted. But then you see a small village set into the hill. You continue your slow trot along the path. Enter the village, avoid the village. I need to get money or something. You walk into the village, the young hill dwellers pass you and stare at your strange clothes. Look at the people. Their own attire is rough by comparison to your gear. They wear their hair long but p p piled up on their heads. These people are ghastly poor. The village is like a ghost town here on the knife heads of the Badlands. Take in, talk in an alehouse, rest in an inn. Maybe we can trade something. The village is small enough that you are small enough to find an inn simply by walking around. The woman who runs this place stands on the doorway with her arms folded. Are you from the king? No, I'm merely a traveller. I am I am on a mission from the king. No, I think we should keep it. No, I'm merely a traveller. The woman now is right at you. This is a guest house, the best in Chris Tanti. Only guests stay, and any guest of mine knows it costs me three gold to house a traveller overnight and two to feed them. But it's all between friends. You do not have enough money for it for either. I'll go elsewhere. She shrugs, not appearing to upset by your decision. You creep off to the edge of the village. Outside. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to have to rest outside. I've got no food or anything. The cover of the forest is dark and the ground is thick with fallen branches, mud and bri briar. You walk for nearly an hour or more, then you pass a large tree atop a great fist of curling roots. The perfect pot place to sleep. You have nothing to eat, you have settled down to sleep, you are feeling tired and weak from the day. Drink the bramberberry juice. Before you close your eyes, you drain the bottle of bramberry juice and feel the blessed, blessed by the strength of it. Then there is nothing more to be done. You will not be an uninterrupted night out here under the stars, surrounded by beasts, but you will still feel a little better for it. Halfway through the night, you awoke and suddenly a, a roach pig has sunk its teeth into your leg and is quickly sucking at your blood. Draw your sword. Oh boy. Aren't you an ugly fella? 
let's be at it then. Let's go with a free power attack. Side wipe. The pig grinds its teeth as though hoping to you'd slimpy leave it to its meal. But that would be foolish. You stab at its throat. The pig charges forward, tusk leveled for your heart and, and runs directly onto your sword. It's mostly out of power from what I can tell. So I can probably attack it again for a good amount. Side sweep. You batter the, ro the roach pig back, cutting it down, but most of the, ba of the blows bounce off its chitinous cell. It grunts, but, but it's built to survive an impact of, of collapsing trees. It feels nothing from the blow. Hmm. Let's keep. Let's press up the attack. Swipe, swipe. Ooh. Then the rope pig charges. You swipe with your sword, but the tusk enters your skin and buries itself deep. You fall, catching a rock on the back of your head. It drops its head low. Yeah, it's got to charge again. Defend. You drop your guard down low. The roach pig swings its head, slashing its tusks. Then its cell descends. It's about to do something, but what? Don't know. I don't want to find out. Overpower it. Cut. Oh god. Reading your sword, you attack, charging forward. Avoid um, forward sword biting for blood. But the force is deflected by its hard back. The pig yelps and squeals, its shell drawn back up. I, I can't stop now, I'm going to have to keep on pressing on the attack. You best the roast pig again, slicing into its hide, but some of the impact is lost on its casing, it snorts and mutters. It begins to prowl the ground restlessly. It's got a charge. Defend. You drop your guard down low, the roach pig charges and growling and huffling. You turn back you turn the blow with your sword, its hard cell exterior flexes unnervingly. It must be at nearly out of stamina. Come on. Oh. You ready your sword, you attack, cutting the roach pig down, but most of your effort is sealed from it by its thick cell. The it whines pathetically. Come on again. There we go. You make excellent strikes, slicing into the boar's hide. The creature squeals so loud you think your ears will burst and it falls back, hitting the earth with its hard cell and rising dust. It is quite suddenly quite dead. The trees fall silent once more. Four stamina lost. Same full. You carry the carcass assault away from the camp so that you will not be overrun by rats and ants. Then wiping your blade in the grass you settle back down to try and get some sleep. Your dreams are vivid once again. You walk carelessly the hills, endlessly the hills moving up and down, under your feet like a ripple, like a rippling sea. Every step exhausting you, but you, but you stop your, but, but no step moves you forwards. Meanwhile, the food in your bag is rotting, wet from the sweat on your back, and in the distance, a deep voice is booming with laughter. The long curved fingers, one one hand, are curled around the metal frame of the crown, while the other beckons you forward, as if into a trap. Right, we've got no food. Uh. You work. Uh, you walk early. Uh, you wake early. Sit. Sit for a moment. With no great hurry to leave this place that you have lingered so long. There is now the third day of your journey, and your muscles in your legs feel lean and strong from so much walking. You spend a short while enjoying the peace and hurriedly collect your possessions and set off on the path. Kista, Chris Tantini is surrounded by surrounded by several miles of fields. A filthy town sit in a bowl of mud. As you follow the path between lines of some big crops, you come to a fork in the road. The right hand le way leads past a set of outbuildings, while the left hand directly off into the deep woods. And that is where we're going to end it for the day, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Cornish Knight. If you have liked, please press the like button. If you wish to subscribe, please press the subscription button. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter at the links provided below, or check out my channel to see if there's anything else that you might enjoy. I will catch you all next time on Sorcery. Have a good day.